yes, hello everyone. Nice to see you, well, not see you, but nice to have you join us today. Uh, so I'm Richard Williams and I'm a senior lecturer in the music department here. And I'm going to run through two programs because I'm also the co-convener of Creative Arts. So we have um, lots of different students come, come to us for, with, with many different interests. Uh, some are very interested in music. And so we offer two different degree programs for those students. One is music and, where you combine music with another subject. And then the other one is creative arts and cultural industries, um, which uh, includes all of our music modules. But uh, if, if you are here and you're thinking, oh, actually, I'm not particularly musical, I'm just interested in the creative arts, don't panic because um, as you'll see, there's a lot of breadth in the creative arts and cultural industries degree. So while there is a pathway through it for those of you who are interested in music, um, you know, that we have people working on film, history of art, and other aspects of the cultural industries as well. Um, so very happy to answer any questions, but otherwise I'll just get started and share a few things with you. So I don't know if you've been to SOAS before, we're situated in the heart of London, and we're surrounded by museums, galleries, and uh, the British libraries around the corner, and so on. Um, the key thing about us, of course, is that we uh, focus on specific regions. So we're interested in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East and their diasporas. And in fact, when I say specific regions, that's a lot. <laughs> that's, that's most of the world. But nonetheless, this is actually quite unusual, as I'm sure you're aware. You know, unfortunately, a lot of uh, university degree programs in the UK focus <clears throat> dominantly on uh, Europe and, the, and North America and really take them as their starting point. And, and we do the opposite. We do talk occasionally about Europe and North America, but on the whole, our priority is the rest of the world. And we try to have a very global perspective. Um, we are a relatively small university, um, but surrounded by one of the largest uh, cultural cities in, in the world. And that's a very nice balance to have. What I particularly like about SOAS personally is compared to other universities in London, it's small, it feels intimate, it feels like a village in the heart of a very big place. Um, and our students really enjoy that as well. They get to know us, the teaching staff very well, and they get to know each other really well as well. Um, and it's also a very international university. It's worth saying we're about 50% international students. Um, we also have lots of mature students as well because a lot of people discover SOAS slightly later in life. And so the conversations in, in the class are always really exciting because you know, you'll have perspectives from Pakistan, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, Peru, um, Japan. And, and so the, the conversations can be really, really interesting. Um, and also just um, in, just to say, you know, historically, we're also very invested in languages. Um, we, our range of non-European languages is really, really exciting. And we have many students who arrive to do musical creative arts and then say, oh, well, I want to study Swahili. I want to study Hindi. I want to study Korean and we find ways to accommodate those students. Um, I work primarily on music and literature and visual art and I use um, uh, four Indian languages and I dabble with another couple. So um, yeah, language, languages are really at the heart of many of our programs. But today I want, as, a, as I said earlier, our focus is music and the creative arts and cultural industries. This is just an image from our main uh, music room and you'll see all of, uh, well, not all, some of our instruments up around uh, the walls in the background. So if you do come to SOAS, we, you're, you would have your, a lot of your classes in here where we have you know, Indian tabla on the top. Maybe you can see my mouse. We have Korean uh, gaigum. And in this instance, this is a class for Cora from West Africa. But um, let's dive straight into the degree program. So the next bit's going to be a little detailed, um, but hopefully it will be a good opportunity for you to get a sense of what you would actually be 
studying here. So I'm going to move back and forth between the, do, the two degrees. BA Music and is, and I don't say this lightly, it is unique compared to other music degrees around the world. It's completely unique because our focus is on the world beyond Europe. Um, we offer courses that you just will not find anywhere else. We have courses on music and politics in Cuba, uh, popular music of East Asia, um, Morocco, South Asia, all, all kinds of things. Um, what's also quite important is that we have a range of different musical styles that we are interested in. So some of those styles are traditional and historical, uh, folk music and so on, but also we go right up to contemporary artists, experimental artists, sound artists and so on. We also have a balance between courses that are about the history, the context, the culture of music, but then we also have modules that are about performance and we also offer training courses in industry facing skills. So that's things like sound recording, podcasting, um, filmmaking and so on. Um, and, and these are really important skills and we've just renovated all of our recording studios. So we have state-of-the-art tech in place. And I think what's really exciting about our program is just the variety. So you'll be moving between different classes, looking at music from the perspective of anthropology, history, composition, the music business, sound studies and so on. Um, just to give you a taste of the kinds of music that we are interested in, these are two of our um, performance instructors. So we invite um, musicians from various traditions uh, to teach our students. And so all of our first year students um, rotate between different instruments, including the kora and the tabla. So just to give you a taste of kora, this is um, our teacher, Kajali Kuyate. Um, who would be teaching you in first year and potentially afterwards in your degree. Let's give a taste of the Cora. <laughs> And yes, safe to say a lot of our students fall in love with Cora uh, while studying it here. It's a really beautiful instrument and we've got a large collection as you've seen already. And then next is uh, Sanju Sahai, who's from a really important lineage of hereditary musicians who are specialists in the art of tabla. Um, and so he teaches tabla again to our first year students. <laughs> And what's really exciting about um, having these artists as part of our faculty 
is that they have their own networks. And so um, in the past, some students have worked with Sanju Ji throughout their degree and then have gone to India with him to take part in his workshops that he runs in India and so on. And so um, you start off in the classroom at SOAS, but could end up traveling the world following musical sounds. Um, this is a quotation from Tumani Giabate, who you may well know of. He's a multi-Grammy award-winning musician from Mali, and he's an honorary doctor from SOAS. And he said the music department at SOAS is the most exciting place in Europe to learn about the great musical traditions from around the world. And, and we're very proud of our collaborations with master musicians like Tamani Giabati. And so the second degree, which many of you will be tuning in for is the BA Creative Arts and Cultural Industries. And there is overlap between these degrees, but the, the emphasis is slightly different. So this uh, program offers a balance between the sort of hard humanities disciplines of critical, theoretically rich engagement with uh, different art forms, but also uh, an industry facing perspective, one that looks at the cultural industries and prepares our students for fascinating careers in the art sector. What's really exciting about this program is that it's really interdisciplinary and it's very cross-cultural. So you move across different regions, but you also move across different art forms covering art history, music film, and cultural theory, literary theory, and so on. It, it's, it's a really exciting program from that point of view because it just gives you so much variety. Um, within that, you know, you will have some students who are there primarily for music, but are interested in other things. You have others who are more interested in a region. So you have, we have students who really connect with say Chinese art. So they might look at Chinese music, Chinese film, uh, Chinese ceramics, Chinese painting, and weave their way through looking at lots of different forms and really building up expertise. Um, it's a nice program because it offers this combination of theory and practice and we have lots of different skills on the table. So these include radio, uh, the art of curating. Um, we look at film festivals and musical performance. And what this is achieved because we have a range of facilities on site. So we have um, a, a really important gallery space, the Brunei Gallery. We, uh, which, which changes their exhibition sort of every three months. We also have filmmakers on site, people who do graphic novels are attached to SOAS. We have really interesting alumni coming in. We run workshops with industry professionals all the time. So it's a very um, good place to sort of connect up to all of the interesting things that are going on around in London. Um, so for example, our students who take the course Presenting World Music on Radio have in the past uh, gone to BBC Broadcasting House and used the facilities, the recording studios in the BBC offices um, as, part of, as part of their course. And of course, needless to say, it's really exciting to be looking at global cultures in uh, London where we just have so many festivals and events and exhibitions taking place all around us. And so we find ways to connect our students up to all of the things that are going on in the city. So here's the nitty gritty bit. Here's the detail about what you would actually be studying. So I'm going to look at uh, year one, first of all, and I'm going to look at BA Music And. And then I'm going to look at creative arts and cultural industries on the next slide. So for BA Music and um, you would only only you would do four modules with us in your first year. So you would take writing across the arts, which is, which trains you up into um, academic skills, thinking about how one approaches talking about different art forms from music to film um, through writing through the art of the essay, but also through other kinds of writing. You also take Sounds and Cultures, which is an introduction to studying society through music and sound. You take Decolonizing Pop, K-pop and beyond. This is something I teach. And we ask questions like, why are people in Argentina uh, getting really excited about South Korean popular music. Um, so we take K-pop, the K-pop phenomenon, as our starting point to ask larger questions about 
global popular music. Um, so in the past, we've had topics like uh, pop music of Tibet, um, hip hop in South Sudan, music in uh, Zimbabwe, uh, South Africa, but also um, India. And yeah, we take lots of different case studies, but we use K-pop as our starting point. And then performance one. Uh, so perform first year performance, you would alternate between different instruments, kind of open your ears up to different sounds and different approaches to learning music. So our students this year are doing Chora, which you've heard, Tabla, which you've heard, Gamelan. So we've got two Gamelan sets. In this image, you can see one of them. Um, so this is from um, a tuned percussion orchestra from Southeast Asia. And this year we're also including um, Iranian santur, so Persian classical music. So in your first year, you've got a very varied, exciting program, mixture of sort of society, aesthetics, musical performance. And then you would team this up with four modules from your second subject. So in particular, we get lots of students who do music and social anthropology, uh, music and world philosophy, music in Korean is very popular, um, but we've got a whole range of different combinations available. So it's a very nice way to get expertise in a region or to have a spread of skills. So if you're doing BA Creative Arts and Cultural Industries, you have eight courses because you'll remember for music, it's half and half. So you have four and four. So here you have eight. Some of those are the same. So writing across the arts is there. Sounds and cultures is there. Decolonizing pop is there. But you bring in some art history. So theories of art and histories of art um, relating to Asian Africa. You also have some film. There's this fantastic module, Introduction to Film Language, History and Theory. It's really, really interesting. Um, so that introduces you to film studies, which connects up very nicely with music or art history, if those are your strengths. And then we give you two options. So here, if you are musically inclined, you can do performance. If you're more art history inclined, you can do some global arts, which is art history modules. Um, or you can bring in a language. So you could be studying Hindi or Arabic or Chinese at this point as well. OK, I am giving you a lot of detail. So if you're confused about any of this, please put a question in the chat and, and I can respond. I'll keep my eyes open. So that's year one. And then I'm just going to quickly touch on years two and three. So for year two in music, um, you keep performance either something from your first year or you develop a new instrument. We set you up with music teachers from any instrumental genre, basically, um, within reason, uh, from our areas of interest. You also have a theoretical module which introduces you to cultural theory and then you get guided options. So these are our music options, things like um, uh, the world of Cuban music, global hip hop. We have courses on East Asia, Middle East, South Asia. Um, we also have skills like introduction to sound recording. The music business is very popular. Um, so a whole range of really unique options. Um, and in year three, it's similar. So the options rotate uh, year to year. So you always have a and as this, a set of new things that you might do. But your two compulsory courses, one is Urban Soundscapes, which talks about um, understanding the city through, through sound, music, and people's experience of sound. And one on music and travel, which looks at global flows and circulations of musical forms. I'm not gonna touch on these in too much detail, but more information is of course available on the website about these different modules. We're updating them at the moment because some of these modules um, like music and travel are new. And so we're updating our pages at the moment, but you can refer back to the recording if you want to check what the structures look like. So for BA Creative Arts and Cultural Industries, um, it's quite different. Um, you have all of those music options available to you, so you can bring them in and still make it a very music degree. But some of you may not be that interested in music. You may be curious about musical society or how people think about sound, how artists are using sound, but it may not be your immediate point of reference, in which case 
this degree has that flexibility. So in year two, what you're doing is you're looking at, again, key concepts in cultural theory. So you get your theory there, but then you look at curating global arts and arts, culture and commodification, which, which look at different aspects of how the cultural industries work. Sometimes quite big kind of theories about how we end up with um, particular kinds of arts being put into galleries, being put on display and other art forms don't necessarily make it into the public eye. We look at how you would go about designing an exhibition on Chinese painting or an album on music from Mali. What are the actual decisions that go into curating um, an art form from a particular region? Um, and then also uh, we have film festivals and film curating, which is a nice follow on from your first year where you're also looking at film. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. There we go. <clears throat> and then you also have um, more guided options from art history as well as from music. <clears throat> so these include things like uh, topics in Japanese art, contemporary art, art of the Islamic world, and then also some more industry facing courses like collecting and collections, which again, thinks through some of the the large debates around how collections are formed. At the moment, there's this big move called decolonizing the museum. And we've got a number of academics who are really interested in that and looking at, you know, um, about whether objects that have arrived in, well, that arrived in London, you know, having been looted or taken in colonial contexts, whether what the politics and the logistics are surrounding, surrounding returning those objects to other regions how that works within the museum sector and also open options. So here you can take something from uh, a language to another option that is offered around SOAS in a different department potentially. And in year three, you have a lot of choice. So year three, you do an independent study project which is effectively like a dissertation. Some students will, will write a dissertation and they will write a long essay on a topic that they're particularly interested in. And this is very good training if you want to go into research. Um, other people will do a creative output. So in the past, we've had students who, have, who were musical and so recorded an EP and then wrote a critical piece about the decision-making process um, behind creating that EP and how they were going to market it. And so we had one student whose EP is now up on Spotify and she did that work as part of her independent study project. Um, we, you could also potentially um, do another kind of creative out output, including podcasting, making a film, curating um, a project, uh, like um, an exhibition or, or a festival. And alongside this, we also offer um, modules where you can create things. Um, so we will have a module called creative practice, um, which could be including composition or podcasting, etc. cetera. Um, we also have a module, which we haven't run in the last year because of COVID, of course, but we have a work placement module, which is called directed study in creative industries, where we would team you up with one of our industry partners and you could um, basically do an internship there for a term and, and get academic credit for doing that. Again, happy to discuss that more if, if people are interested. But uh, throughout the degree, we offer a range of creative assessments, students do video essays, audio essays, creative critical pieces, they design festivals, exhibitions, they do go on gallery tours, um, they do fieldwork projects, there's a whole range of different things that students are doing here. So who is teaching you? This is always a fun question. So just to give you a couple of insights um, on the music side, for example, we have uh, Professor Lucy Duran, who 
is a specialist in the music of West Africa and um, an ardent devotee of the Cora, apart from anything else. But she also worked at the BBC for about 30 years, has lots of industry contacts. She did a radio documentary series called World Roots, which is all up on iPlayer. So if you go to iPlayer and BBC Sounds and look for World Roots, um, you will hear her amazing <laughs> documentaries. I mean, she's really just travelled to most countries on this planet and listen to the music there. So she uh, also produces award-winning albums and, and films as well as part of her research. Um, on the film side, we have also Professor Lindue Dovi, who is a curator of African cinema and set up um, some really significant film festivals for African uh, filmmakers. Um, and she's also interested in filmmaking herself. And in art history, we have people like Dr. Christian Luknitz, um, who works on the arts of uh, Tibet and the Himalayas. And when he's not in SOAS, he's usually somewhere in the Himalayas, uh, working with monks, helping them uh, preserve and document their artwork in, in their monasteries. And then also he consults and, and advises them on setting up their own museums as well. Um, so basically the point is, you know, we have people with regional expertise, linguistic expertise, expertise in particular musical forms, styles, art history forms, film, film genres, etc. But a lot of them are also practicing in some very important and interesting ways. So what about you? Um, what, what could you hope to get out of this degree or these degree programs? So what we hope our students leave with is a sense of the nuances of global art forms, uh, a kind of rich, critical, theoretical perspective on things, but also um, applied skills, transferable skills, industry facing skills. And so we look to help our students enter the workplace and, and find some really interesting, fascinating career paths. Um, they do this through things like the internship scheme, the work placement module, the contacts that they make on this program. And we have students who end up in all kinds of interesting um, areas of the arts. So on the music side, um, on the one hand, we've had quite a few graduates who have gone on to be nominated for the Mercury Prize. And, um, Nick Mulvey, who's one of them, well, uh, said uh, it, that his studying at SOAS was the broadest horizon he could find in music. Um, what's notable here is that these three artists are all sort of effectively in um, popular music. They're, so no, none of them have really decided to become a, a classical Indian music performer, etc. Instead, what it really what SOAS really offered them was it just opened their ears to so many different sounds, textures, possibilities, composition strategies, and they brought this into popular music in really interesting and experimental ways. But apart from performers, we also have people like Michele Banal, who is now the lead curator for world and traditional music at the British Library. Um, but other music graduates go on to work in uh, education and research, music therapy, um, music um, management, um, editorial journalism, all kinds of different areas. Of, um, and on the creative art side, uh, we've had some very interesting students pass through our department, the School of Arts. Um, so some of the School of Arts more famous alumni include Claire Su, uh, the co-founder of the Asian Art Archive, uh, Victoria Chang, who, set, who was the director of uh, Vive Arts, which is a really pioneering group that's interested in virtual reality and how virtual reality connects up to new digital art forms. And uh, Ava Langre, who is the artistic director of the Freeze Festival, Freeze London, um, major arts festival. So again, what's really nice about our alumni is on the one hand, it's very encouraging and it suggests, you know, the kinds of exciting routes that our students can go down, but also we invite them back. We invite them in to connect up with our current students so that we can um equip our students with an appreciation of what goes into a career 
in the cultural sector. So final, final thoughts then, you know, why study music and the creative arts and the cultural industries at SOAS? And again, I, I suppose this is something that a lot of people might question. They might think, well, it doesn't sound very sensible. It sounds very fun <laughs> and very interesting, but is this a good move for, for your own personal development? And well, obviously I'm going to say yes, definitely. And our students don't really question this when they get here and discover the things that, that they're studying. Um, I think just on a, on a basic human level, these programs are about human creativity and they're about human innovation and what it is to be human, what, what society and culture can do, can achieve. And, and yeah, this is, is quite fundamental. This is the point of, of being human in a way, the kinds of wonderful things that we can design, listen to, create. But at the same time, you know, apart from the idealism, we give our students, you know, this critical faculty, they a real um, sense of how to interrogate, challenge, um, uh, explore a, a topic and not be afraid of, of something that they're unfamiliar with. Um, I think also this is very important because there's this idea about um, not about about not generalizing about things, having a nuanced perspective on the world. So on the one hand, these are valuable skills. Our students leave informed and prepared. I mean, where else are you going to have an understanding of what happens in South Sudan, what happens in in Egypt, what's happening in Indonesia? and Cuba and all through uh, music and the arts. And this is, this is a really exciting opportunity to get a very global education. Um, but it's also about getting representation right. So I remember a few years ago, we were talking to an artist who's been put on at the Tate, a major artist, Serena Bimji. And she was saying how often when she is being curated, including at big national institutions, people, misidentify her work and they focus on her identity and they focus on where she comes from but and they foreground that rather than actually talking about her art um, and so she'll present a new exhibition and everyone will be talking about about who she is but they won't be talking about what she has to say about color form shape texture. So we're interested in preparing our students to getting things right by understanding and appreciating artists and, and doing it respectfully. I think also, you know, this is a bit of a cliche, but it is a changing world out there. And a lot of the art forms we look at that we really appreciate and love um, are vulnerable. And so we look at how tradition um, is evolving and how traditions fit into, into our world. So we look at things like heritage, preservation, sustainability. Many of our students do go on to work in uh, places like NGOs and UNESCO and start thinking critically about how to preserve art forms. Um, and this appreciation of how to preserve things or, or think about sustainability links up with the appreciation of the cultural industries, which is such a dynamic, huge, huge part of, of our economy. And it's a really um, important thing to be plugged into. And of course, we look at global arts in the digital age, you know, what is happening to arts from Sudan or, or Korean art forms in a global connected digital age. And ultimately, you know, I, I always say only at SOAS, just to really make the point that um, we do things here, our students write about things here that you just do not find in other places. And that's what really makes it so exciting. And that's what gets us out of bed in the morning, the chance to learn and understand and appreciate things that you just wouldn't really have access to um, in, in many places. So I will finish there. That is my email address. So if you are curious about any of this, 
uh, please do drop me an email. Um, if you're watching the recording, again, I'm always happy to answer questions, so feel free. Um, but for those of you who are in the call at the moment, I'm very happy to take any questions as well. So uh, feel free to raise your hand or put them in the chat, whatever works. I think maybe one thing that we can um, kind of maybe have a bit of discussion about, um, and it was in some ways was um, raised by, um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, uh, Misami, um, who said that she had actually attended the in-person um, open day that we've held already, but wasn't able to attend um, every single talk that she wanted to because there was quite a few talks she was interested in, um, has so come back today. So I think maybe that's one thing that we can kind of touch upon in that um, at SOAS, it's very interdisciplinary. You have your chosen discipline that maybe is your kind of uh, primary focus, but it's one of the beauties of SOAS is that you are able to incorporate so many different areas um, in your studies in general and kind of broaden your field out a little bit. Um, so maybe we can talk a bit more about kind of um, the various different options that we have and the kind of um, intersection and connection between so many of our programs. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, for example, you know, we have many students who are interested in, in African studies, and they will be scattered around in different degree programs in SIAS, um, and, and they will take our modules on African music in order to deepen their understanding of African cultures and societies, be it East Africa or West Africa and so on. Um, and the same goes the other way around. So, our students who are really interested in um, East Asian art, for example, uh, might take a module in Chinese philosophy, for example, to give them that, that depth and um, to look at culture from, from a few different angles. We also, I should have said this earlier, we also um, have a partnership with King's College London and the music department there. So if you are on the music uh, program in SOAS, you can take some options uh, from King's College London. Um, so if you're saying, well, yeah, I, I love music from around the world, but I also really love jazz, you know, you can study jazz as well. We'll just send you to our friends at King's. Um, and similarly, we, because our courses are so unique, we regularly have students popping in from LSE, from King's, from UCL, taking our courses because they just can't find them anywhere else. And we also have a lot of um, international exchange students who are regularly popping into our classes, um, again, because this is the, one of the only places in the world where you can take some of these exciting things. Um, oh, so I'm seeing, yes, yeah, so actually yeah, um, Masami's question kind of goes to that point. Um, so yes, if you um, are taking a different degree, say history, um, then you would have access to some of our modules. Yep. So every year there's a list of, these are called the open options list. So the open options list is um, a bank of modules that all departments offer to students all around SOAS. Um, so some things like performance um, are only for music students, but then other things like um, song, voice and body in Indian music, that would be something that would be offered more broadly. Great. Well, do feel free to pop any more questions um, into the chat. Um, there's no such thing as a silly question. So uh, we welcome all of the questions that you might have. It might be around um, particular modules or focuses of the program, but it could also just be to things like um, what kind of areas might you go on to after your program or um, even if you have questions about the application process, do feel free to pop them in and I'm happy to kind of go through that as well. It is a bit of a smaller group, so I know it kind of feels like we're putting you on the spot a little bit, but um, but yeah, do feel free to ask anything that you would like. 
otherwise I'll just play some more chorus music just to, <laughs> just to fill the silence while people gather their thoughts. So we've got options. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let me play a little bit more just in case anyone wants to type anything. go good <laughs> yeah, a question lovely um so the question then is what do you look for in a personal statement for creative arts yep so for creative arts and cultural industries we have a really varied mix of students they're coming in with a very with a with a, um, a, a real mix of of backgrounds behind them um so we're open about which subjects you've studied in the past um we we want to see you know an um a kind of humanities style way of thinking about things so if you've studied literature or history or music or fine or history of art or art or or, or anything really <laughs> we're, we're quite open geography you know um these kinds of subjects uh, are always welcome um but i suppose what we would be thinking about would be um a, a passionate interest in some kind in in some of the arts that that we focus on so that could be anything from music painting sculpture film um tiktok videos i mean we're interested in in social media and digital art forms um all kinds of things because you know there's so many to choose from and then i suppose an interest in um in our regions. I mean, what's really exciting about SOAS as a student is uh, it's an unusual choice. We're a very unusual choice. We shouldn't be, but we're unusual in the sense that we do look at things that other degree programs don't. So what that happened, what, what is the result of that is that all the students we get here are here for a reason. They're all here because they're, they, feel frustrated that they can't find out about music in Africa or they don't know what's happening in contemporary arts in Asia and you know they they love k-pop but they can't find courses that really talk about Korean music Korean history Korean culture and so we we get students who come here who are really interesting and interested in in things from around the world and so if you can just reflect a bit of that in your personal statement and sort of say you know i'm, I'm thinking of, of 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 doing this course because i'm you know motivated by by an appreciation of of an art form from the rest of the world then that would be wonderful yeah and, but we have very very students so there's no single template um yeah it's really about the, the passion of of the student i think that's that's what we hope for Yeah, and I would add that, you know, a lot of students are always um, saying to me, like, I want to put something in my personal statement that's going to grab attention and or I want to have done some great internship or some great work experience that's related to it, but I just don't have it. And I think for us, it's it's about learning what's interested you. Um, and that could be what media you've you you've used or consumed, um, what you you know, kind of where you get your influences from. Um, it could be personal experience. Um, there's so many different areas. So it's not a one size fits all. Um, and I think a really great thing about a personal statement that I always kind of 
um, go back to is it's exactly that it's personal it's personal to you um, and so sometimes that desire to like you know find that big kind of standout statement if you will takes you away from kind of just thinking about yourself and your own interests and kind of where you might want to go and maybe some questions that you have. We don't expect you to be able to answer all the questions on a certain subject. If you did, you wouldn't need to come <laughs> and learn it with us. But it's more just kind of, what are the questions in your mind about this? And again, kind of going back to our regional focuses, I think, you know, quite often you'll see at different institutions that maybe one particular year, there will be a focus or a fad almost in terms mm. of looking at a particular um particular regions music or a particular um, genre of music and I think what the importance of it is so as is we see this as an ongoing focus that we have um, and it kind of you know it carries on year after year after year it's not something that just kind of pops up one year and then kind of is replaced the next so I think that's really interesting for you to kind of come and join us and, and take from our programs. Mm, mm, mm. Do feel free to pop any more questions here. We are sort of coming to the end now, but um, I think we have time for one or two more questions if you do want to pop them in, but obviously no pressure as well. Uh, as I say, it's a smaller group here, so sometimes it can seem um, like quite a lot uh, to take in. Maybe one of the things I would say again about the kind of regional focus um, and so as we kind of talked about it already is that the students who do come here, like you say, do come for a particular reason. Um, and I would say that we have a very international student body. And I, I kind of phrase that in terms of an international student body, both from outside of the UK, but also quite an international student body from within the UK, if that makes sense, in that a lot of our students, you know, um, will have will come from a range of different backgrounds and heritage as well. And that kind of plays in on these um, kind of areas that we look at. So if you're minded to be with students from all around the world and really um, kind of immerse yourself in different perspectives, ideas, opinions, cultures, um, then that's really what you're going to get. Um, from SOAS and, and quite often with that comes a lot of discussion and the thing about SOAS students is they don't always have the same opinions, they don't always have the same perspectives, they don't always have the same ideas, but they're very willing to share and learn from others um, and just learn what other people think and why they think it. They might still not go away agreeing, but it, that's the whole process of kind of putting it out there and I think that's something really unique to us and unique to our programmes as well. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll probably wrap it up there, um, but we will be sending out the recording of this session um, to you to, uh, this week, usually. Um, and then what I did want to pop into um, the chat just quickly for you um, is the events page um, of our website. So, um, like you say, uh, a couple of you have already been to maybe an in-person event and are now here um, at this online event. We'll have lots of events coming up throughout the year, so I just thought I'd put the link there. Um, and it is a good idea um, to come to as many of these type of events um, as you can, both with SOAS and possibly um, with other universities. It's a really good idea to explore all your university choices before you make your applications or your final decisions. Um, and those students often think it's strange that I say that to them in terms of maybe go somewhere else and go to somebody else's open day and see what you think. I think for us, it's really important to have students who have seen what is, is out there for them and have decided that SOAS is the right fit rather than us being the only institution that you've heard from. But hopefully you will circle back around to us afterwards. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think it's a really good idea. And I, it's great that um, you've been to the um, in-person open days as well as the online ones. These online ones are great. And I think it makes it you know, very universally accessible um, for students both in the UK and outside of the UK. But um, SOAS is again one of those universities where being on campus and having that experience is also quite vital. So I would say that if there is any chance of you getting down to the university, um, hopefully before you come and join us, um, then I would try and do that if I were you. And we do also um, run kind of um, off, um, we run on campus visits, so you can kind of book into those as well through the same link that I've provided to you. So thank you all for attending um, and thank you very much, Richard, for uh, a great presentation and some lovely um, music nice as well. There. <laughs> great. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Hope, hope to see you soon. Bye. <laughs>